Welcome to Hump Day Wednesday. It's May 8th, 2024. Your day with a podcast brought to you by Wyoming State Parks. May is here. Now's the perfect time to start making plans for those summer adventures. What better place to spend time outdoors than a Wyoming State Park or historic site? Visit wildparks.org for more information. Pesky is a good way to describe the weather situation around the region as uh, the system is basically coming in two waves. We've seen the first wave that really came through Monday. A lot of areas had a break from the precipitation yesterday, but the storm, which really hasn't moved very much, is about ready to wrap around another period of rain, snow, and wind for the central and northern Rockies and keep our temperatures well below average. So you have scenes like you have there in Leadville yesterday as uh, the mountains will continue to see some spring snows and wind and rain and snow and just blustery, chilly, chilly conditions will be found on the plains. We do expect starting Friday through Mother's Day weekend and I think into Monday and Tuesday of next week, at least through Monday, it's going to be a nice warm up. Temperatures will be a lot more spring like. We'll have better weather for the Mother's Day weekend coming on up. But we're still looking at ups and downs. We're not completely over the hurdle yet as we are going to see probably a pretty good cold front cool surge come into and along the divide towards the middle of next week. We're still not into that second half of May when things tend to get more stable. So ups and downs are still continuing. The good news is we do have some up good weather coming better weather for Friday through Monday but we'll probably see a change in the weather towards the middle of next week. Lots of wind mean lots of trees down. Here's a shot from the Snowy Range west of Laramie of multiple trees coming down across roadways. I know a lot of branches and trees down in many areas. And this is why we've got thunderstorms. This is from Monday up near Spearfish, South Dakota, along Interstate 90 there. And then beautiful sundowns, sunrises still happening with all these clouds coming on through. Here's the pesky storm. Now it's evolving a little bit. Now notice if you look very, very carefully, you can still see where the circulation is right here in terms of where the low center is. But now the wraparound moisture is coming down like this. So the rain and snow out of Montana going to be backing into northern Wyoming today. Then this mass of cloudiness is basically going to stay there slowly drifting south, elongating and kind of getting stretched out over time but there's still a significant amount of energy and moisture up here that's gonna be coming on down, producing another significant wave of snow in the mountains, rain on the plains, mixed with snow at times. And yes, I'm afraid to say, we're still gonna have on the back side, the south side, still plenty of wind, although the winds aren't gonna be as strong as they've been lately. So there you can see on the 500 millibar chart where the low is, it's been around since Monday in that general vicinity and will be for another day. But starting tomorrow, the movement of the atmosphere begins to kick into gear a little bit. We have winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories. So this is a, a lot of pink and blue. So the Bighorns, Yellowstone Park, the Beartooths up here around Jackson, through the Wind Rivers, the Northern Laramie Range, Laramie Peak to Casper Mountain, winter weather advisories in effect in the brown here, meaning yeah, more high wind warnings along the southeast corner of the state. So we're, we're still going to be plagued by a lot of weather. This is through the next three days. Through Friday afternoon, you can see a concentration of that heavier moisture in Montana, but it is going to be pushing back into central and northern Wyoming again. So basically, this is round two. And then some moisture is going to spill a little bit further south into the Wasatch, into the south central mountains of Colorado, gonna see some moisture coming on through lighter amounts in the down sloping along the plains. Focusing in a little bit more through Friday, you can see there's a bit more of a southern extent of the moisture, mostly in the form of occasional waves of light rain on the plains, periods of snow in the mountains, still the higher Black Hills as well. Temperatures, these are the temperature anomalies by noon today. So. Keep the jacket handy. It's going to be chilly out there, and this is where the snow is going to fall through the next 72 hours. Another round of heavy snow for the Bighorns, the Beartooths, the Yellowstone Plateau. There you can see the Casper Mountain, Laramie Peak area. So the mountains are going to continue to pile up more spring moisture 
especially up over those higher elevations. Here are the wind gusts through today. So this is another day of gusty and strong winds. They're not gonna be at the levels, those super high levels we had Monday and Tuesday, but they're still gonna be persistent, still a nuisance, when they're gonna go from Alberta to New Mexico. There's really nobody escaping the strong and gusty winds. Now this is when things start to get better. A piece of the low breaks off and retrogrades back to Nevada into Utah there and will spin around through the weekend. But this high pressure dome is gonna allow some warmer air to come up. The counterclockwise spin around the low helps bring up some warmer air. The real colder air now is directed towards the Midwest and the Great Lakes. But this little guy right here doesn't look like much, but this will keep the atmosphere moist and unstable in the Great Basin and part of the Rockies between Friday and Monday. And what that's going to do as it is going to take its time. So this is Saturday, this is Sunday. It's just going to be lingering. So what will happen is while it will warm up, we will have some afternoon showers and thunderstorms in the moist, unstable air around this low. So you can see sort of a curl of where the thunderstorms are going to be. This is the lightning forecast as moisture is drawn in from this low. It's nothing that's going to be too widespread, but there's going to be a fair amount of thunderstorm activity, especially sort of along this axis right here as we get into Saturday, Sunday, and probably into the day Monday. So this is Saturday. This is Mother's Day Sunday. There's going to be more of an active pattern of showers and thunderstorms, especially along there. So maybe western Kansas, southeastern Colorado, you're going to be able to pick up some rain. We're hoping some of these showers and thunderstorms may get some further north into southeastern Wyoming that needs some rain. And it certainly is going to be one of those weekends where it's going to be a lot better, but there's going to be a little bit of shower and thunderstorm activity. And this is for Monday. We're going to start to see a front approaching, and this will trigger a bit more in the way of showers and thunderstorms up here. This is a real spring-like look to the pattern as temperatures finally start to warm up a little bit. And here are those temperatures. These are the forecasted high temperatures by Saturday. A lot of 60s, a lot of 70s, getting better at Saturday. This is Sunday for Mother's Day. Still comfortably mild, better than what we're experiencing now. And these are temperatures by Monday getting a little bit warmer. Look at that. Upper 70s and lower 80s all the way across eastern Montana and western North Dakota. So areas that are receiving some snow now could see 70 degree temperatures by the weekend and into early next week. Starting to really heat up in the deserts down south as you'd expect the deeper we get into May. However, this is where the up and downs are going to be by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. The high pressure ridge wants to retrograde westward. That puts it back in the eastern Pacific, which means, well, that's going to likely mean a series of cold fronts and small systems are going to come out of western Canada through. So if this transpires, the middle of next week gets colder. However, it may bring more needed spring precipitation along and east of the divide as this will trigger some upslope and some scattered showers and thunderstorms along the east side of the divide. So that may bring some rain to needed areas east of the mountains a little bit further south into this area here towards the middle to the end of next week. So it may not be a bad thing to have another little wave of cooler weather, but it's not going to be as intense of a system and as intensive as a cold or wind system as what we're experiencing now. So we're slowly getting there, folks. It's like eating an elephant just one bite at a time. Have yourself a good Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.